Do you know what's going to kill the car industry? Denial. Whether they like it or not, we, they have to accept the fact that the world has entered the inflection period for electric cars, which means that the market is now ready to accept this new technology. And it really has nothing to do much with what individual companies want. If you just look at the parallel that everybody always uses is uh, the smartphone. When uh, Apple introduced smartphones, the traditional phone companies just made a joke out of it. They said nobody will want it, it's too expensive, whatever. And uh, they continue to peddle whatever it is that they wanted to sell. Uh, and even BlackBerry, which had like an extended lease of life because it had a bit more smart features than the rest of the traditional phones, even they couldn't stop it. At the end of the day, when the technology has matured enough and people are ready to take that mental leap and understand that the new technology will offer them a lot more benefit than can be had even with a cheaper older technology, they will move on to buy. My name is Shamsul and welcome to FTV. <laughs>
So let's look closely at what Tesla has achieved with their Giga factories. Now, if you look at Giga Shanghai, it's the one that's already established and is up and running. They're now producing about a million cars. Their run rate has achieved a million cars a year. That factory was allegedly supposed to be able to build about 450,000 cars. And if you look at the footprint or the layout of Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin and Giga Texas, they are very similar in terms of layout and in terms of size, but that is the blueprint. They've designed the factory as the end product. The machine that builds the machine is Tesla's focus and they're making it out. They're trying to crank out factories like a finished product. They are, I mean, they are all the same. So when you compare it to factories like, for example, the two big car companies in Malaysia, Proton and Prodor. Prodor has a manufacturing complex in Serenda and Proton has one in Tanjung Malim. Now, Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin, Giga Texas are about the same size and they're about the same size as these factories in Serenda and in Tanjung Malim. And those factories for Proton and Prodor can crank out about 250 to 300,000 cars, whereas Tesla can produce about a million cars uh, out of their factory. And it was a stated goal by Tesla that they want to build factories that are at least uh, a quarter of the size of normal factories, but be able to produce the same number of cars. So they want to achieve like a 75% savings in terms of space for their factories. And they have achieved that. Yeah, so this is no longer just what Elon Musk claims. It's actually fact now that these factories are at least... 75% more space efficient than other factories and can now can crank out cars faster than other factories as well. Now you have to remember that Henry Ford did not conquer the world with the best car ever built, but he did conquer the world with the best factory ever built at that time. Now, now that fact was not lost on Mr. Musk or Mr. Toyota. Now you might be thinking, why am I dragging Mr. Toyota into this? Because just like Mr. Musk, Mr. Toyota realized that the real advantage is in the manufacturing. And in the 1980s, Toyota hit they are pinnacle in terms of the Toyota manufacturing system. That raised the bar so high that by the 1990s, just almost every car maker had TMS consultants running around their factories telling them how they can do things better. And that's what made Toyota the biggest car company in the world. Not the products, the factories. This is why we hear Elon Musk keep saying, you know, that the real advantage is in the machine that makes the machine. Because in reality, if you really, really think about it, the traditional car companies, they could probably make better electric cars than Tesla. But they can't build it faster than Tesla. And it's most likely they can't build it cheaper than Tesla. And it does not help them at this point that Tesla is so popular that in the UK, for example, in March, the Model 3 and Model Y outsold the Vauxhall Corsa. Now, the Vauxhall Corsa is less than half the price of the Model 3 and Model Y. And here you have for the first time a car that is priced like a BMW 3 Series or X3 that's outselling a mass market product. And that is really telling in terms of the change of mindset among buyers. Hey, don't kill the messenger. I'm just telling you the way things are. Well, well the good news is that uh, people still do race horses today. So companies like uh, Porsche, maybe Lamborghini, Ferraris, and all these companies can help the market to ICE race cars all to themselves. Huzzah! The brand lives on. Uh, by the way, do you want to know what the other milestones that Tesla has set for itself? Uh, well, the other one is that they want the Model Y to be the most popular car in the world. I mean, they want to sell like a million cars a year of the Model Y. Mm, that probably will happen by 2023. That's their target, 2023. It actually might happen this year, but yeah. Uh, the other one is that they want to build 20 million cars a year by 2030. And they also want to have 3 terawatts of battery production capacity by 2030. Yeah, but those are for a different video. Right, help me out a bit. Uh, press the like button and maybe share it with your friends and uh, subscribe. Yeah, help us out. And if you like this video and you don't want to miss any new ones, press the bell button. See you again.